just a correction. Um, so before my secondment, um, I'm still employed by the Environmental Protection Agency. And over the last eight years, I have been working in a division that was responsible for implementing the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity and its two protocols, the Nagoya Protocol and the Cartagena Protocol. So just a, a minor correction, I'm not directly responsible for, the, for implementation. My portfolio has changed a little bit with regards to overall coordination. So pleasant good evening to all. Uh, let me recognize Dr. Paloma Mohammed, fellow panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I will try to give you uh, an overview uh, with regards to multilateral environmental agreements, specifically the Montreal Protocol and what the Department of Environment has been, do has been doing. So of course we're always pleased to share a platform like this with other government agencies, the University of Guyana, to raise awareness on not only the Montreal Protocol but all the other multilateral environmental agreements. We are also pleased to participate in this session as we believe that sessions like these are powerful ad advocacy tools that, can, that, cannot, that not only help to impart knowledge, but lead to behavioral change at local, national, and international levels. And we've heard a lot of that coming out of Minister Holder's uh, remarks as well as with my colleague from Hydromet. The Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer is a protocol to the Vienna Convention for the Protection of the Ozone Layer. It is a legally binding international treaty that was adopted on September 16, 1987. It aims to regulate the production and use of chemicals that contribute to the depletion of the Earth's ozone layer, thereby protecting humans and the environment from harmful levels of ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Since signed by 197 countries, including Guyana, the Montreal Protocol is the first treaty to achieve universal ratification. That is to say, it has been ratified by every member state of the United Nations. Because of this, it is regarded as the most successful international agreement of all time. This exceptional international cooperation has borne much fruits. It has led to the phase out of 99% of ozone depleting chemicals in refrigerators and air conditioners. The latest scientific assessment of ozone depletion, which was completed in 2018, shows that parts of the ozone layer have recovered at a rate of one to three per, per decade since 2000. At projected rates, it is estimated that by 2060, there will be completed, complete healing of the ozone layer. But the benefits do not end there. Whether adver advertently or inadvertently, the Montreal Protocol has helped to and continue to help to mitigate climate change. Hydrofluorocarbons, HFCs, are acknowledged as potent greenhouse gases. Phasing down HFCs means mitigating climate change. Already it is estimated that the, the protection of the ozone layer has averted an estimated 135 billion tons of car carbon dioxide equivalent emissions from 1990 to 2010. To this end, and in perspective, consider that global carbon emissions in 2018 were at an all-time high of 37.1 billion tons. This means that the conscientious implementation of the Montreal Protocol has resulted in a, plan in a planet that is, in spite of the heat that we are experiencing daily, is 3.6 times less hot than it should, could have been. It is also recognized that combining actions to phase down HFCs with energy efficient improvements in the cooling industry is necessary as the minister would have uh, stated, and it will achieve bigger climate benefits. To this end, the government, through the Green State Development Strategy Vision 2040, particularly the development, the, the development objective on transition to the use 
of renewable energy has committed to ensuring energy efficient technologies and practices in existing and new buildings and doubling the rate of improvement in energy efficient efficiency by 2030 and shifting to a low to low carbon emission transport sector and use of higher efficient vehicular fleets on a global scale much more ambition is needed scientists <coughs> have stated that the Montreal Protocol can, of, can avoid up to 0.4 degrees Celsius of global temperature rise by the end of the century, while continuing to protect the ozone layer. And as such, in October 2016, the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol was adopted in Rwanda. This amendment to Guyana is expected to ratify in 2020, as my colleague from Hydrogen would have indicated, is expected to help to reduce the production and consumption of HFCs. Ladies and gentlemen, at the national level, coordination and cooperation among various stakeholders, including government agencies, are necessary to ensure concerted effort towards the reduction of HFCs in the environment. At the Department of Environment, under the Ministry of the Presidency, and as part of our mandate to spearhead the implementation of all environmental initiatives of the government, including multilateral environmental agreements, we have moved to establish the Multilateral Environmental Agreements Committee, the MEAC. This is intended to ensure the coordination and synergistic implementation of the various MEAs that Guyana has signed on to, and to fully augment their potential gains to the country. We are optimistic that this will further strengthen the existing frameworks in place as we, as we strive to ensure a more wholesome planet for generations to come. I thank you.